All right, here we are in chapter three on polynomial and rational functions. And this is 3.7 on rational functions. All right, so we're gonna start using arrow notation. And basically that's used to describe how values act as they approach from different directions. So we have symbols and we have our meanings. So this says as X approaches A from the left. Okay, that's what that's all indicating. And so what we're doing is we're getting x is less than a. So what happens is, so say we have something like this, and maybe, you know, this is our x, y axis, and maybe this here line is our a. So it could be, you know, it's a negative a or a positive a, it doesn't matter, it's a. And so what we're doing is now we're approaching that a from the left. So this is from the left. And then on the next one, we're approaching a from the right. So maybe, you know, we're coming in from the right. So this is the positive. So this is negative, this is positive. And we're approaching that a, whatever a is. In this case, it could be a negative two. Okay, and so, you know, as we get closer and closer, we're getting there, it's still going to be less than a when we approach from the left. And when we approach from the right, we're going to be always greater than a, but we're going to get very, 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 very close. Okay. Now we can also approach uh, to negative infinity and to positive infinity. And, you know, thinking about that, you know, here we have our positive infinity out here. We have our negative infinity or, you know, we can do up and down too. We can have our positive here and our negative here. So, you know, we can go this direction. We're going to approach negative infinity or we're going to approach positive infinity. Um, we can also say, well, that's the x's. And then our f of x is going to approach positive infinity here and our f of x is going to approach negative infinity here and then also f of x could approach a so the output approaches whatever a is so you know we could have some a and it can approach that so it's just kind of approaching different directions and, and you kind of have to look at, at what that is okay so that's that's how we're going to look at that um basically and you know all the words are here so you know this one as x approaches a from the left this one's as x approaches a from the right as x approaches infinity so x increases basically with an out bound so we're just going to keep going this way and this one's x approaches negative infinity or basically x uh, decreases without bound and f of x approaches infinity the output approaches infinity or increases without bound and then it approaches negative infinity or the output decreases without bound and here our output approaches some uh, value a all right so we also have these toolkit functions we've seen these before you know one over x and one over x squared in case you forgot what they are uh, let's go ahead and, and i've plotted these on a calculator um, the one over x squared is the red one over x is our blue and so that's that's what they look like and so you know these are toolkit functions that we've used and and so that's that's what we're going to do so let's let's go back here and and let's look at our toolkit function let's use in this case uh the one over x squared just because you know it, it's all on the same side so if we draw that we'll have something like this and remember it it's kind of going up and it's going up like this and then it comes down and again you know not the best drawer in the world and and we have some asymptotes okay because it's going to keep going up forever that way but it's never going to actually touch this asymptote line here and it's never going to touch this one here. So if we want to write this, we can say maybe as x approaches the zero, so we can say as x approaches zero from the left, f of x approaches infinity. And then we can say on this side, as we go closer to zero here, as x approaches zero from the right, f of x approaches infinity as well. Now here we can say as x approaches negative infinity, uh, maybe we can write it here, as x approaches uh, negative infinity, the f of x approaches zero because it's gonna get closer and closer and closer to zero but never get there. And as here as uh, x approaches uh, positive infinity, f of x is also going to approach zero, okay? So this is our uh, x equals zero asymptote. It's a vertical asymptote. 
And here uh, we have y equals 0. And that's our horizontal asymptote. So those are all the different things that we have here. And so what we can say is we have these two new ideas, the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. And the vertical asymptote says a vertical line uh, at x equals a, you know, in this case, you know, we have x equals 0, where the graph tends to towards positive or negative infinity. So, you know, in our case, it's going to positive infinity here as input approaches that x equals 0. And so we write as x approaches a, f of x approaches infinity, or as x approaches a, f of x approaches negative infinity. Now, if we had had that other uh, uh, 1 over x, you know, we'd have this piece, and, and then we'd have, you know, something like that. And so here, as x approaches uh, 0, in this case, from the left, then f of x is going to approach negative infinity. And then as x approaches, you know, negative infinity, f of x is going to approach 0. But it's going to come down from the bottom part, not from the top part. So that would be the only difference here. Uh, we could say as x approaches 0 from the left, f of x approaches negative infinity. And so that would be the difference here compared to up here where we had, you know, it was approaching positive infinity both sides. Here, it would have gone down the different direction. And then we have that horizontal asymptote where you have some horizontal line, y equals b, where the graph approaches the line as the input increases or decreases without bounds. So, you know, as we said here, as x approaches, you know, infinity or negative infinity, the f of x is going to approach, you know, some b. In our case, it was approaches 0. Okay, so that's that's kind of the key there. So that's that's how we can use you know, one of our toolkit functions to look at our vertical and our horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use transformations to graph a rational function. And since we've already looked at our 1 over x squared, we know what it looks like. This is going to help us uh, kind of graph what we have. So we, we know it says sketch the graph, find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the reciprocal squared. Well, what's the reciprocal squared? Well, so if we write that f of x equals 1 over x squared, that's the reciprocal squared function. That has been shifted three units to the right. So we're going to be shifting three units to the right. And we're going to go four units down. Okay. Well, how do we rewrite that to make it the right function notation? Well, that's going to give us f of x equals. Well, if we're going to shift to the right, that's going to be our x minus 3 squared. And if we're going to shift units down, we're going to have subtract. And in this case, it's going to be 4. And so that would be our actual function, starting with our x 1 over x squared. Then we shifted 3 units right and 4 units down. And so now let's draw, well, let's see, I guess we can use this for our, our axes. And, you know, uh, if we had our original on here, you know, it would be uh, here and here. But now we're shifting three units to the right. So if we do that, we're going to have one, two, three. So remember, our vertical asymptote was here. So if we're shifting three units to the right, that means our vertical asymptote now, let's put that in red, our vertical asymptote again. So that was going to be now here. So that's going to be x equals 3 is our vertical asymptote. And we're going to shift four units down. OK, well, if we're going four units down, then we go one, two, three, four. And so that means that is going to be our new horizontal asymptote. And so <clears throat> y equals negative 4 is the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Now, with all of that said, can we draw our uh, new function, which is written here? Well, yeah, we can. It's just going to be something like that and that. Because all we've done, we shifted it right, 
and we shifted it down. And so that fits the new asymptotes because, you know, we, we plugged those in first. And so basically uh, what we would do is we could rewrite this as, okay, now this is uh, x equals 3, this is y equals negative 4. And when you put that with the actual axis here, it moves it and it makes it look like this, okay? So what do we have? If we want to write this, we can say as x approaches, now we're at 1, 2, 3, from the right, uh, f of x uh, approaches infinity. And here we have as x approaches 3 from the left, f of x approaches positive infinity. And here as um, we have uh, x approaching negative infinity, f of x approaches what? Well, now we're at going to approach negative 4. And here, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative 4 as well. Okay, So we've got all those things. And these pieces are part of what we shifted. Shifted 3 units right, and so we're shifting to 3. Shifted 4 units down, so we're going to the negative 4. Okay. So hopefully that will help you. And again, if you remember how you do your transformations and rewriting it, that's what it would look like. But we could just go directly from this and we've you know, said, well, we're going to shift right units. So we go one, two, three, and that's going to be our new vertical. And we went down four, so that's our new horizontal. And we can sketch our graph in there from that. Okay. Now rational functions, which is really what this section is about. So it's a function that can be written as the quotient of two polynomial functions, p and q. Okay, so it's going to be some f of x equals p of x over q of x. And you know, those are just going to be our polynomials that we have in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, now of course, our q of x cannot equal zero. Otherwise, we divide by zero and that's not allowed. So what do we have here? This is an application problem of this. So it says, there are 1,200 freshmen and 1,500 sophomores at a prep rally at noon. After noon, 20 freshmen arrive at the rally every five minutes, and 15 sophomores leave the rally. Find the rate of freshmen to sophomores at 1 p.m. All right, so let's write down two polynomials, because we're going to have to have a numerator and a denominator. So let's write those down. Let's call it freshmen and sophomores. So freshmen are what? Well, there are 1,200 of those to start with. And then what's happening? Well, afternoon, then 20 arrive every five minutes. So we're going to add 20 every five minutes. And x is going to be however many minutes later it is. So if we've gone for 20 minutes, then we'd have to multiply it by 20. Now, sophomores, they start out at 1,500. But what happens then? 15 sophomores leave the rally every five minutes. OK, so we're going to subtract 15 for every five minutes. And so we would have those two functions. Now, can we simplify those functions? Yeah, because we can take 20 divided by 5 and stuff like that. So that really is going to be 1,200 and then plus 4x. And this one's really going to be 1,500 minus uh, 3x. So those are going to be our functions. Now, we can rewrite into an overall function. So let's say for the rally, it's, since we're doing a rally, let's say r of x is going to be the ratio of freshmen to sophomores, it says. So that's going to be 1,200 plus 4x over 1,500 minus 3x. And so that's just the ratio of these two polynomials, or in this case, two binomials. And so that would be our function. And now it says, find the rate of freshmen to sophomores at 1 p.m. Well, 1 p.m. is what to 12 p.m.? Well, that's 60 minutes later. So we want to find r of 60. Well, that's going to be 1,200 plus 4 times 60 divided by 1,500 minus 3 times 60. Okay. Well, if we do that, we're going to get, and we take 1,200 plus 4 times 60, that's 1440 over 1500 minus 3 times 60, that's 1320. And if we plug that into our calculator and do the fraction, that's going to be 13, or let's see, 12 elevenths. 
And so that would be our ratio because that's what they're asking for. Find the rate of freshmen. So 12 freshmen for every 11 sophomores. All right, so we'll stop there and we'll come back with more.